This is a Nexus special. Episode 3, The New iPad. I don't do millimeters. On Friday, March 10th, 2012. Hey, how's it going? It's good. How about you? Good. That's good. So, a proud iPad owner this week. Uh, as opposed to a disappointed iPad owner? That's every other week. Oh, every other week. I see. Yeah, but this this week was kind of special. Why? What happened this week? Well, I I, gotta... I haven't read any tech news the entire week. Uh, blasphemy. I don't no, no, that. no. See, last Saturday I realized that there's some Apple thing going on, and I figured that it would all just be speculation and a bunch of crap. So I decided to not read any tech news until Wednesday, and today is definitely still not Wednesday. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, fine. It is. So I just didn't read any tech news. Okay, because I want to say, if we're pretending today is Tuesday, then um, none of my none of my apps I have are actually valid. Yeah, I... but you know what? I pretend every day is every day. That's a good way to go through life. Yeah. yeah. So Speaking uh, of life, can I talk about iLife? Uh, how about if we talk about the actual iPad first? All right. Huh. So, so um, on Wednesday, Apple released the new iPad. So, um, seems you've been reading the news. Yeah, actually, I do read the news a lot. Mm. Makes well, sense for well, a broadcast. For well, a... well, see, I read the news on Wednesday. I started to read it as the iPad was coming out. So I, I you know, was watching live streams at the keynote. Oh, you did get a live stream. Well, I mean... Um, I, I didn't start till like, li- 6 o'clock. Live tweet streams. I mean, not like a video, but live the live tweeting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so there's no name. It's just the new iPad. Yes, third generation. But they didn't say that. But... Well, they did They did actually say it during the video, but they didn't say that anywhere else. Like, it doesn't say that on the website. It literally says, the new iPad. Yeah, and one of something amazing. Mm-hmm. During the... Up- when I installed the update, the actual iPad physically changed, because... I knew when I got it, it said iPad 2 on the back. But magically, it just says iPad. Um, yeah, so... So I've been deceived. So it was kind of funny because I remember a lot of people on the on the internet writing about how the new iPad is just going to say iPad. And I didn't know for sure. I assumed it must say iPad 2 if people were saying that because, you know, it would have to be different. Otherwise, it wouldn't be newsworthy. But I was misled. Mm-hmm. Well, so it's the same pricing, right? Yes, which... um. Kind of, I knew that was going to happen, but one thing I don't didn't think was going to happen, like it took me by surprise. Is they lowered the price of the iPad 2 by $100. See, that would have been fine, but they're keeping it in production. Right. Like, I was expecting, done, just in the trash now, buy a new one. But I think that makes perfect sense, because they um, had their school ebook, iBooks thing, uh, what, five, three weeks ago, four weeks ago? Yeah. Uh, Mid-February, right. and... They really want schools to adopt this technology, and four ninety nine per student is a lot, even with that fifty to one hundred dollar discount schools already get. So a three ninety nine iPad is really three fifty. That's a, that's one hundred fifty dollars less that a school needs to pay. So for you know schools, that's going to be a good deal. Hmm. Or How at least does the Raspberry Pi cost. Yeah, but that um, can't read books in any. Can't way. if you have a monitor. That means people are going to have to have a monitor. Well, I mean, you can find somebody who's moonlighting for monitor sales and other businesses. Nah, uh, it doesn't. Uh, an iPad is a much more captivating experience, and the people will be oh, happy. Oh, yeah. I, I have seen um, just children are sucked in with Angry Birds. It's amazing. I know. Um, and and I've seen children sucked in even by educational apps. So, I mean, people, they'll, uh, they'll play the games if they have them. Yes, but I've seen some terrible educational apps oh, yeah. for this. Um, it's. Blow the head off the zombie and count how many bl- splatters of bloods appear on the wall. Kind of you know almost it, as bad as that. You know, whatever makes kids learn how to count is all fine. One headshot. <laughs> <laughs> Two headshots. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, you know when they're available? Um, March 16th. Yeah, March 16th, which would be uh, next Friday. Yeah. And... and uh, Heard um, one of her former colleagues has already pre-ordered it. Yeah, um, Neil, I think, uh, pre-ordered it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, I uh, I wonder how much they're going to have in stock, because what I hear is AT&T pre-orders have already ceased because they have ran out. Yeah. And I, I don't know what the Verizon numbers are, but I'm imagining that they're not going to be too far off. Mm-hmm. So, if you wanted a which... 3G one, or, I mean a 4G one now, which we'll get to the features in a minute, yeah. you won't get any. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I would go with uh, Wi-Fi only. How many think Wozniak ordered? Hmm. You know, I hear he likes Android a lot, so maybe he didn't order, like, eight. Maybe he only ordered three. Yeah. I know. Do they have a limit on how many you can pre-order? 
I know they did that for iPhones, but I don't know what yeah. the limit is for iPads. Remember, like he got his two on line, mm-hmm. like two for himself, and yeah. then he wanted to go get one for his wife, so he right. drove a Segway to the store for a few days. Mm-hmm. One of the things, though, is uh, on uh, Wednesday, I tried to go to the pre-order section. Oh, cool. It was completely broken. Fantastic. I, I couldn't do it. Um, so I just stopped, and I never went back. Mm. Should have gone to you. No, but the website they had was broken. Yeah. I mean, Apple's website was broken because mm. of so much traffic. Yeah. Yeah. So, you want to go over the features? Um, how about I do the software features and you, you do, do that? The or do you want to just alternate hardware? How about, if, how about if I just do the hardware and you do the software? Because I don't know as much about the software. Yeah, because the software is what I've been playing with the last 72 and, hours. And the final hardware feature I have is, of course, iWorks and iLife. So, well, I'll do the hardware first. So, we have a new Retina display. Fantastic. Uh, yeah. So, my cell phone, which is this piece of crap here, mm-hmm. everybody can see it, right? Well, this has about 134 pixels per inch. It has a resolution of about 480 by 580 or something. Some terrible resolution. Well, this new iPad has a 264 pixels per inch, um, you know, DPI. And that is giving it right in display ranking because you're viewing it from 15 inches away, which is what? Like a foot and a half-ish? I don't, oh. I don't do millimeters. Really? That's okay. right. Well, 12 inches is a foot, you know. Is that what that is? So, uh, I always thought a little it was over a foot away. Okay. Well, so now it's running at 2048 by 1536. Those numbers are really funky because they're not, like, divisible by 1080 mm-hmm. or, you know, any standard. So it's it's some arbitrary doubling. So what they're saying is the new iPad has about a million more pixels than your standard high-definition TV. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know if the iPad can output to the new high definition TV? Well, it, yes, it can definitely output, but of course, it's going to scale down to 1080. But do you know how the iPad 2 refuses to do that? Like it will just keep uh, like it will just box off an area. Yeah, that's what it's going to still do. It do you know why? Because the, the the ratio on this is um 43 and, you know, HD is 16 to 9. Yeah. So they have to do the boxing. So that this looks so bad. They should it does. The I agree. Stretch and skew or do something. I, I definitely agree. Uh, so the new the new models have the option of LTE 4G, which means nothing because in America we don't have things. But in other countries, there will be some 4G somewhere that you can use. And uh, apparently you're getting nine hours battery life on 4G, which is the same as what you would have gotten on 3G previously. So somehow Apple managed to con the chip manufacturers to make them a really, really good chip mm-hmm. that nobody else apparently has. Um, but, of course, there's no Sprint model. And I, I was very surprised with this. So I, was I. I thought for sure that they would have a unified model. Apparently, there's a Verizon and an AT&T iPad. There's distinct models, which is really weird. But the 3G is universal now. The 3G is universal now, but the but there are distinct models for the 4G, which I thought was very, very odd. Yeah. And there's no Sprint model. So on the iPad 4, though, it will be universal. I don't know. I mean... Maybe they'll do what they did with the uh, iPhone 4. You know how they came out with the Verizon mid launch of iPhone 4, like they came up with an AT&T mm. iPhone 4, and then in February, you know, following that, they came out with the Verizon model, and then, you know, they came out with the 4S this time, mm-hmm. you know, recently in, uh, what, October, and then they came out with, you know, all three carriers. Mm-hmm. So maybe they'll maybe they'll do that. Maybe, maybe for uh, WWDC, they'll make Sprint iPads or something. Yeah, we'll see. So maybe, maybe it's one of those kind of things. I don't know. Um... So they have an A5X chip to still do core for processing, but it's quad core for our GPU. Uh, that's all we know about it. We don't know what the clock speed is yet because we don't have one to test with. Mm-hmm. Nobody's taken one apart because it is not yet. Yeah, it, somebody will blend it soon. Oh, yes. The blending is very sad, though. Don't smell it. <laughs> it's toxic. Or no, uh, it will kill you. What is the sketch load? I don't know what it is. I think it will, it will kill you. Don't breathe dust or something. And remember, don't don't breathe this. Yeah, something like that. So, remember how Steve Jobs came out last year on the stage and it's like 33% lighter and 33% thinner? Yeah. Is that what it was? It was for the iPad, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, so it's about 8% heavier this time than the previous model. So, the the Wi-Fi model is, the the, the iPad you have is the iPad 2 Wi-Fi model. It's 1.33 pounds. Mm -hmm. The iPad, or the new iPad is now 1.44 pounds. That's so, not too bad. So it's an 8% heavier. It's not really noticeable because 
you don't really notice that imperceptible weight difference. It's really low. Yeah. I mean, personally, my phone is really light, and it's not as heavy as the iPhone 4, and I love the weight of the iPhone 4. I, I would prefer a heavier device that felt more sturdy and solid than one that was flimsier. Because when I, when I have my... um My phone's also really light, and I have a little bolt, belt holster for it. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I like things that are heavy enough to, like Because sometimes Cause when the, the belt you know is... there. Yeah, because it's, it's, it, the little um, fob thing bends, mm-hmm. and sometimes it's not heavy enough to slide through it. Right. So I have to, always have to make sure it falls in. Um, so I don't like, know how much thicker it is, because I, I don't think they showed it during the keynote. And I would look it up, but then I would care... And I, yeah. I really don't. It's a, probably like 1.2 millimeters thicker. Yeah. Um, um, they, didn't, they really didn't talk about the um, physicalness of the iPad at all. Missed call from somebody. Um, sure, be penitentiary. It's not, though. Um, so it's the depth now is 9.4 millimeters. And does anybody know what the depth of the iPad 2 was? Question mark. <laughs> I get that sometimes. Um, let me find out. Actually, I have it right here. So this is the iPad 2 here. The depth is 8.8 millimeters. So it is, you know, a little bit thicker. Um, what? 7% thicker? You know, that's so imperceptible yet again. And a thicker device at that stage is, with that weight combined, it's going to make the density feel as if, you know, it's heavier than it ever could be with that thinness. That's what I thought about the iPhone when it came out. Yeah, we'll see, though. I think it's still not going to be like the iPhone. Or, like, it's not going to be, I mean, that heavy. Yeah, I know. Um, and, and, you know, it's it's less than 10%. And it's it, lighter than your touchpad. Right. Well, everything's lighter than I think. You know, it, the weight difference is going to be still absurdly... Like, if you add a smart cover to your iPad, that thing weighs a ton. Yeah. I mean, realistically, the smart cover weighs way more than any weight difference that Apple will change. So, I don't think that's going to matter yeah. that much. So, we also got a new EyeSight camera. That's what they're calling it. Mm-hmm. EyeSight. Why? Because it looks as good as your eyes can see. Okay. Okay. Well, um, so it's five. It's, it's five megapixels. It's using the same lensing system that the 4S used. So, yeah, it has like five lenses and then some backlit IPS thing. And I don't know about camera technology, but it's fancy. It it takes much better pictures than the current camera on the iPad. So this begs the question: If they have to update the iPod Touches, will they ever update those cameras? Because now we know that they can make it that thin. Yeah. I, I'm pretty sure the iPod Touch is pretty thin. Um, so do you think they're going to bring a camera that doesn't suck to that now? Oh, definitely. I have to have something to do later this year. <laughs> we'll talk about that later, too. Um, let's see. What else do we have here? Oh, um, did you hear one of the comments they made during the keynote? I probably did. Which one? Do you know how many tablets have been ca- came out this year? You know, I think I think they said about 100 or more, uh, around 100 competitive tablets. How many tablets can you think of? This is going to be hard. Okay, ready? Mm-hmm. No, I don't even think that one came out this year. So, the Zoom... Well, okay, we're going to say 2011. Last two years, because that's when the iPad 1 launched, right? We're going to say 2011. So, I know the motors of the Zoom came out, the Galaxy Tab 10, and 8, and 7.7 Plus. But, you know, I'm a tech person, so this is different. The touchpad, I know, um, the Motorola, the, the Asus Transformer. Yeah, that looked really good. Um... Me. There was um, some other one. Yeah, that's it. Uh, that's all I know. Yeah. Um, so maybe I said seven. And I can think of a few more, but I don't remember the Names. last name. Um, yeah, yeah. What was that company? Fugushi or, or uh, Fujitsu? Or... Yeah, Fujitsu. Yeah. yeah, I know so they made a few. Also, but... as a side note to the depth we were talking about, the uh, iPod Touch is 7.2 millimeters. So what if they just said, oh, we'll make it a little bit bigger. You know, make it thicker. You know, they, they don't have to talk about it. But the difference between... That and 9.4 is only 2 millimeters. Yeah. And they could put a real camera in it, finally. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, I'm just saying. I know how much you like millimeters. So much more than feet. I do, I prefer my millimeters. Okay. Anyway. Um, so there's no Siri, but there is voice dictation. Which is, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't know. Well, what do you think? What's wrong with that? Siri is their ultimate thing. It is super cool. Everybody says... Like, did you ever seen the fake quotes they came up with right before the show? Yeah. Like, Siri is amazing. All these oh. fake journalists say so. Okay, well, I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute, too. Um, I think voice dictation is great. I love it on Android. But what I hear is that people, at, at the U, people try to use Siri and voice dictation and stuff. They just call it Siri, even though it is actually called something else. 
uh, they try to use it, and it, it ends up saying, we cannot get to the network right now. Let's try again later. And, uh-huh. you know, stuff like that. So apparently Siri is down a lot. Yeah. Um, I mean, I have the problem with Android sometimes, too, but it's usually because I'm not in good Wi-Fi or 3G reception range. And, of course, you know, Siri requires uh, an active connection. Yeah. Let's see. What do we have here? It supports a personal hotspot now. So uh, on my uh, cool. on my phone, I can make it become a you know, wi- Wi-Fi hotspot using 3G. And so now if you have your 4G iPad, you can do that, too. And I think it supports up to five devices if your carrier allows it. And so what we found out is AT&T doesn't allow it, and Verizon does. Yeah. Oh, and furthermore, Verizon includes the hotspot in your data plan. So you don't have to pay an extra $20 to use the hotspot per month. It, you just pay your regular $30 for two gigabytes or whatever, and it works fine. Yeah, sounds like a no-brainer to go with Verizon. Yeah. And, and so AT&T said, we're working with Apple to allow this feature in the future. And it's like, what do you have to do? I don't know. So it has, again, the same uh, same battery life as the iPad 2, which is incredible and revolutionary. Yeah, the Presu- battery life has gone down, though. Presumably, with the extra you know depth that they added, they filled that space in with battery, I guess. Mm, that, that's the only thing you can assume, because what would you need extra space for if you didn't want to put a bigger battery in? More retinas. Okay. Uh, no. so, also, so during the keynote, uh, Tim Cook said... We asked our users, so he asked, I, I mean, in the past, Apple has said to not ask users things. Like, you know how Apple is, we don't do user testing, we don't do user groups, we don't we don't ask the users because they don't know what they want until we tell them. You know, that's what Steve said. Mm-hmm. Well, so, in the keynote, Cook said, we asked our users, what do you watch movies on? And they responded, iPad. What did what do you read email on? And they responded iPad. And so he did this for like four minutes. Okay, maybe not. And then he asked, "What do people play games on?" Uh, iPad. And that just okay. seemed like so, the biggest lie in the world. So and I thought it was funny because, like, he said, "We asked our users." So it's like, so you're asking people who already have iPads what they do stuff with, and they're going to say the iPad because that's what they do stuff with. I have the iPad, and I do not do stuff with it besides send an occasional email or tweet. Right. Um, it's a worthless device. And so, as you were saying earlier, Cook commented on the 100-plus competitive tablets, and nobody came close. And so, then he went on to some examples. And so, he brought up, like, what, a Galaxy Note or Galaxy Nexus or a Galaxy um, tablet, like uh, the 10.1 tablet from yeah. Samsung. And he displayed a Twitter app on it, and he sen- essentially chided Android that this looks just like a blown-up phone app, because that's what it is. So he did a few examples, like of Yelp and some others, that essentially the apps on Android aren't immersive and aren't fancy and aren't beautiful, and how compared to the iPad apps they are. Yeah. And do you think that's true? Very much. The, so. the quality of Android apps are very very low. But one um, also. Yeah. There's a lot of um, low. apps for people like or like on the iPhone, like to distinguish the iPhone apps and mm-hmm. the iPad apps. Yeah. But there's so many of them that just aren't for the iPad yet. Um, yeah. But, I mean, on Android, though, um, they promote all of these, you know, tablet, or they want to promote all these tablet stuff, but they can't because there just aren't quality apps for it. And usually what happens on Android is there's there's not much distinction between tablet and phone apps because, you know, Ice Cream Sandwich, they are unified. Mm -hmm. So in the market, I mean, I, I haven't experienced this, but I haven't seen a single app that changes its, you know, UI layout or anything depending on what platform. Because I do have the touchpad now, and I have pretty much all the same apps here, and it all looks the same. Mm. Yeah. That's too bad. So on the website, there's a new slogan, Resolutionary. Yes, I love that. You like that? Okay, well, I was initially angry with it, but I got over it. I'm okay with it now. Yeah. I mean, I can't I can't say it's magical and revolutionary anymore because I'm, ne- I'm never going to say re- it's resolutionary. That's so stupid. Uh, you'll be saying it by the end of the week. No, I can't do it. It's, it's well, as soon as you have an iPad three in your hands, you'll be able to say it. I might be able to say it then, but I still prefer the classic, magical, and revolutionary. Unless you have a microphone by it, you when you get your iPad. I will. Um, maybe. I like how um, Schiller said price just at four ninety nine in the keynote. Like, oh, it's just four ninety nine. I make that in twenty minutes. He probably does. <laughs> yeah, he probably honestly does. Or just walks away as much money as he wants. I like how in the keynote, like, if you want this as much as I do, and I and I know I want it a lot, you should go out and get one, because you know I am. And it's like, you've had one for weeks, man. You know, you work yeah. there. Like, I'm sure he's seen it. 
Like, there's no way. Like, yeah, no. Yeah. So Wasn't I don't he know. saying that he was developing apps for it the previous week? I'm or? pretty. I'm, I, well, he's VP of product marketing. He's not doing apps, but you know. Um, I thought it was funny during the keynote that um, they demoed voice dictation on the screen, but not like in real time. They don't want because you know sometimes because it would fail, like yeah. for sure. Because with all of the problems that people have been reporting with Siri and voice dictation in general, it would probably fail, and that wouldn't look too good. Yeah, and they also did it in different languages too. Yeah, they did it in different languages with Siri. Like um, Australian. What did they? What, oh, well, what was the weather like? I guess yeah. I think that was their keynote or their you know their mm-hmm. phrase. Um, the the Japanese one sounded really good. Did you hear that one? Yes, I did. It it sounded um, very well spoken for you know Japanese. It's a lot harder to break down than it is in English because their inflections are a lot different. Like it doesn't follow the rules that Latin follows. Yeah. So for Siri to be able to I think that's why it took so many months. Right, yeah. Actually. So for Siri to be able to do that is great. Which means they're probably not that much further off for Chinese. We'll see. But uh, they have some other problems with that. Right, right but now. if but they want they want to they want to be in the Chinese market, so uh I'll wait till they're actually selling iPads there. <laughs> well so um one of the things you mentioned is this was the fastest launch ever. That's what yeah. that's what I believe Tim Cook said in the uh, uh, in the first month, what was it, twenty five different countries? So in the first so next week it's going out to what, twelve, and then on the twenty third it's going out to another like twenty. Yeah. Um. So in two weeks essentially it's they're going to be their fastest rollout of any product. Mm-hmm. But what country isn't on that list? China. Oh, China. Do you know why? Uh, just some copyright problems. Oops. I wonder what they're going to do about that. Anyway, you should uh, talk about the software now. Yes. Um. So I have, they've released with uh, the new iPad and everything else, the I, iOS 5.1. And um, something I just noticed right away is that um, it looks almost identical, except for a few of the buttons have shaded. Um, when you use in Safari, it's actually dark and nice looking now. Um, when you're using FaceTime and other stuff, there's more transparencies when you're doing that, so... Just the, the standard apps like FaceTime, Safari. So like um, some 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 so standard cosmetic tweaks. Yeah, everything but Mail has kind of changed a little. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, iCalendar looks about the same. Or iCal. Is it really uh, still called iCal? No, it's just called Calendar. Good. But uh, that's what I used to call it. Either way, um, so just a few basic things. But I've noticed the battery has been so much quick, faster draining. You know, it's funny you mention that because on my MacBook Air, it's been draining a lot faster too in general. Yeah. And I suspect it has something to do with running Twitter and Dropbox continuously. But uh, I do that all the time. Yeah, I I thought so too because when I had this when I got this uh, MacBook Air in June or uh, I mean July, I, I had all those things running too, and I didn't know it would be so bad. And it just seems like it's getting worse. Hmm. I don't know. Yeah. So, what do you think the battery rate is now? Well, um, I've lost 40, 41% since I left home, and that was two hours ago. Okay. So, 40%. that's almost double the lossage mm-hmm. per hour. Yeah. Um, that's interesting. That's better than beats per second. <laughs> Not really. Um, or hertz per minute. So, I, um, so what, did, what did they do to Safari exactly? They uh, made, it, made the Chrome darker? Yeah, it's not the normal light gray. It's um, almost looks black, like kind of like a charred, Char- thing. charred metal kind of. Yeah, that's, that's a very interesting choice. I wonder why they're going towards that for Safari. It's um, more Google like, like in the Google Mobile, uh, like in the Google um, Mail client. So, yeah, it look, that's what it looks like to me. The exact same thing. Mm-hmm. I wonder if that's because they wanted people to they wanted to blend into the Chrome more, so that when you're browsing stuff, it'll look like it's not in the way. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't know what design principle they're going for there. I wonder how it'll look with on a white iPad. It might look a little different because kind of. Have blends. you seen the white iPad? That thing looks terrible in general. They've been advertising it so much heavier. So in than the black. in the keynote, they're all white except for the ones at the table. Everything, yeah. Well, everything on the keynote's projector screen, everything there was white on the website. They're demo casing, they're demoing a white one in all the videos. Yeah. Um, there's of the three pictures that have a front facing iPad on the main page of the iPad website on Apple, only one of them is black. So of the two, which one do you prefer? Oh, definitely black. Yeah, me too. Um, because it doesn't it seem like in better? Cuz it it flows off into infinity, right? It yeah. doesn't feel cased in like a picture frame. Like when I was using my sister's iPad too, um just felt so smaller. Yeah, I agree. 
And I think the illusion of black is much, uh, much better. Well, you love illusions, don't you? I do. But, um, and so they did some changes to Keynote, um, which were um, really nice. Before, we couldn't really throw in a table. Like, if you want, like, you know, a presentation is a presentation without some fancy new um, numbers and stuff. Mm-hmm. Well, they added um, these great ways to um, add 3D graphs. And you could just, with a Those, finger... That does look pretty fancy. spin it around and stuff. Um, if only I could do that during a presentation, like... So if you see these numbers here, and then just twirl, the, twirl them around. Right. So... Uh, it, that works on the iPad two and uh, on the iPad new, one too. Okay, that's good. So, it what is it? Where does it pull that data from, or is it just coming from? So if I have, if I uh, right now it's just a basic thing. If I tap it, I can just go to edit, edit data. Okay. And then once I'm in the edit data, oh, cab, that's really It's nice. a beautiful interface. Do you oh, see? that's that's very simple, very yeah. easy for normal people to um, use. So I love what, it. So what this is is just it's just like a table. Uh, it, it's just a table with like headers for the data going across and vertically, and then you just put in the numbers with like a little calculator interface. Mm-hmm. And then you can um, just change the axes if you wanted. You could just. You could also do math in it, like if you're trying to do stuff. So you can do stuff on the side, mm-hmm. um, and then. If you're not happy, you can change the colors and change the stuff. And there's also this new animated tab. Yeah, uh, they they said stuff about that, but they didn't demo it at all. So, and then, so, uh, you know what I just realized? Maybe. There's no way to capture the screen video. So how could somebody make a demo video of this? They'd have to have a camera facing onto the iPad. Well, Apple can do it. They have the connector. But that, they're the only people in the world. Yeah. Huh. Well, actually, can't you hook it up to a TV? Yeah, but oh, okay, so you have to do that kind of like if you can hook it up to a TV, you probably could hook it into some intermediary device to capture the output before it goes to the TV. So um, um, I found what I was looking for. Um, I see. found animations. So yeah, you can so just how to do look. fancy build ins? Oh, I like that. And look, look, there's even shadowing on the 3D graphs. They love their shadows, don't they? Yeah. Um, so it's a huge increase and a huge win. Um, I I didn't like the Keynote app before. Like I know I gave you a presentation uh, about video and architecture, and well, it's my quality of my presentation abilities at all. It was, it was the Keynote app that made it fail. You, you know, I I found it kind of limiting too when I tinkered with it. Yeah, um, but it's much better now. So have the themes changed at all, or are those the same? No, same same themes. Okay. Um, I I don't really like all the themes. I think there there's no way to like do one from. I mean, you can do one from scratch. But I, I just want like a kind of a generic blank one. Do they have the do they have the keynote presentation theme in Keynote? All right, creating presentation right now. Uh, oh, I'm so yep, glad. Right there. They, they, that, that is my favorite. I wish I wish PowerPoint had one. Yeah. You know, in this keynote, they didn't have sound. Like remember when like they had like like five when, million. This the and then it would drop, drop in and then and the and cloud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the, I you're right. That. I, there it looks no, so much better. I, you need jobs around. Yeah. I wonder if that's because they made it on a. This. Hmm. They made the entire Keynote Keynote on Keynote for the iPad. Maybe that's why I was so terrible. Not surprising. But don't let anybody tell you you <laughs> can't create on an iPad. <laughs> that's right. That's what Schiller said. Do you think that's true? Do you think you can't create on an iPad? Well, look at our theme music. Um, you know, it, it's getting a lot better. Yeah. Um, um, as I as we both tinker with it, and uh, you I mean, know, none of us have any ability with music at all. Um, our, no, nobody on our staff can. Um, and our staff is very deep. Yeah, I know. And by um, deep, I mean non-existent. Um, I'm supposed to allude to that. I didn't. I didn't say anything. But um, what else was going to demo? Um, oh, so, iLife. The whole reason yeah. for uh, the event. Really? No. Uh. <laughs> but it's pretty revolutionary. Is it? Except for iMovie. So and... let's, let's talk about GarageBand first, because that's what we used a lot for our own stuff. Okay. Um, so they added new, I don't know, some kind of smart instrument? Yes, they added um, strings. What is that? Well, uh, strings allows you to have um, some violins, a cello, um, uh, some basses, uh, a viola. So that's the autoplaying feature, right? Yeah. Okay. So if I was just to throw on a beat... And then I could just change it. So that's with autoplay. It's not like you're composing yeah. that on the spot. Oh, no, no. Man, I, you're challenged. I couldn't do that. But I'm pretty fancy. And then I could choose how many instruments they're in. So I could, I could just do a cello. Or I could throw in some violins. And I could throw in a bass. And I could throw in a viola. So one of the new features they uh, added to GarageBand 
is this jam session thing. So yeah. what you can do is you can bring a bunch of iPads together, and they can all sync wirelessly via Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, whatever you happen to have. I imagine the Wi-Fi will be better than the Bluetooth, but whatever. And apparently uh, somebody can host the session, and then all of the instruments that the other people participating play will be recorded onto the host hoster's iPad. Yeah, that's, that, what, that's what I've been waiting for for a long time. And that is pretty cool. So you could legitimately do a real band and real recordings with actual people. So then you wouldn't have to record one track, pass it around, record one track, and pass it around. You could do it all yeah. together. And so, you know, um, Apple always has to demo something before somebody else will do it. Like, I know you have a Nintendo DS, mm-hmm. but I know you also don't game much. But um, I only play Golden Sun Pokemon. One of the things I loved about the DS was its ability to create a little Wi-Fi party. Yeah, um, I, I never was able to use that because I didn't have any games that could do it. Yeah, well, um, when I was in math, I would always play Mario Kart because that's the best game ever. Um, but, I can so, see why you were stayed in math class then. Actually, I, I, um, during MCA testing alone, I played 34 games of Mario Kart. You know, that's not a good statistic. <laughs> yeah, um, but it does break down the statistics wonderfully for you yeah, in the st- settings. Mm-hmm. But basically, what I'm really excited about is now other apps might be able to connect to another person with an iPad because everybody's right. going to have an iPad soon. Hopefully, not. So um, um, let's talk about iMovie because not much happened there in general. Uh, so I guess what you can do now is much like the desktop version on Mac uh, of iMovie, you can make trailers. Mm-hmm. So you give a, you get a little script. And you fill in the stuff in the script, and then you make a trailer. It's much too limiting, though. I don't like it. You know, for a lot of people, though, I think a lot of people would like it because if people, you know, take their iPhone or their uh, iPad, their new the new iPad with the, that high resolution camera, uh, people will have real video clips that are high enough quality to actually use, and you know, it'll be fine. Uh, maybe. But... So. Uh, the uh, iMovie has been updated to handle video in, in 1080p because, of course, the camera is in 1080p, and so that's good. Yeah, uh, so you get you get a, um, about a dozen, half a dozen themes. That's not unreasonable. I think it's fine. Yeah. And of course, you know, you can do real stuff with a real Mac, but but you know, um, the big the big new thing is iPhoto, of course. Yeah, that is pretty wonderful. Um, so tell us about iPhoto. So basically, iPhoto is a really simple to use version of Photoshop. Um, almost everything is automated. Um, not everything, but you can have it auto adjust pictures for you. So let's say you have a picture with somebody holding a cat. Um, you could, like, if you weren't holding your iPad straight up and down, it would auto detect that your iPad was at a slant and correct that for you. That's um, really, really great because it, it appears better to have like a straight picture. Yeah, it does um, white balance better. So one of the things they introduced is smart browsing. So you can have multiple columns of pictures so you can browse them really quick. But then in the main section of the iPad, where the most of the screen is unused, you can have pictures either full-sized or you can have multiple pictures of the same. So you know how, like, how on the iPad you can hit that shutter button really quick multiple times and it'll take those pictures? Yes. Well, you can wind up with like eight pictures of the same thing with minor variations. And what Smart Browsing will do in iPhoto is it'll put them all together and show them all, all what X many of them at once. And that that's really great for knowing which one to pick, which one is good, and to you know get rid of the ones that aren't. Um, but the other big thing, of course, was the the editing, the multi-touch editing. Yeah. So, what is, how does that one work? Well, I'm still trying to figure out how to do all the things, but if, so if you have a picture up, um, you can go down to uh, like the editing brushes and stuff, and then you, if you hit the brushes, you have a, a, a palette of tools pop up, so you can repair, red eye, saturate, desaturate, lighten, darken, sharpen, and soften, and then you just pick on the brush that you want, and then um, you just hover over the area, and it um, it just edits for you, and like depending on how hard you press down, it changes things. And um, there's a lot of cool things. Well, that's really good. So one of the things, they, they, I think they introduced a few of the things. I don't really know what they are, but I guess what you can do is they have um, a color tool, so you can change the color, the color blending, and the saturation, and the desaturation. Mm-hmm. I don't know what they're all named. What is, um, they have the paint brushes, so they have like tools like in Photoshop, so you can... You can doge something so you can make it lighter. You can darken something with a darken tool. You can also do a repair. So if you needed to remove your eyes from your picture, 
like if you wanted to be a ritualist, um, you can yeah. do that now. So uh, you know, I wanted to remove a lamp in my house. So instead of putting it outside, I just removed it from all the all the pictures I have. Um, they also put in some effects, right? Um, they're they're very disappointing. But um, well, what, there's the, going to be like what six of them? Um, yes, there, there is. There's, there's, there's six like, of them. There's like vintage aura, black and white, duotone, warm and cool, and what's that last one? Artistic. Artistic? Yeah. That doesn't look that exciting. It really isn't. Basically, um, you just fix the effect, and then you just drag your thing across, and then um, you turn pixelated, kind mm. of. I don't, I don't know if that's that exciting. I mean, it looks kind of creepy, but... I mean, that, that could be used for, like, our album art. Like, kind of like, not 5x5 five five well, style, yeah, but... Yeah, like, yeah. you know, this kind of the character kind of thing. Sing a competitor's name on air. <laughs> you worship them. Yeah, I know, I do. Uh-huh. Uh, so another thing they do here is they have uh, photo journals. And so in uh, iPhoto on Mac, they had this thing where you take a bunch of pictures, you put them in an album, and essentially it would lay them out for you in a photo book, and then you could order the photo book. Mm-hmm. Well, this thing is essentially like a photo book, but it's more of a collage that doesn't have overlapping. So you know like Metro Child style, mm-hmm. which is a really bad comparison because it's icky and one's not. Yeah, I just yeah. love how, like, when you take a picture, like, you know how it records everything, like, your, your place taken, oh, yeah, yeah. everything. Well, now if you have it thrown in a little collection thing, um, you can just throw a calendar right next to it, and it'll look at the yeah. pictures around and just throw it in there. And it'll get the date, and it has a temperature one, you can yeah, get the, the temperature, temperature and the weather. Is, I think that's a little scary, to be able to just well, find the temperature from five years yeah, ago. It's probably asking Wolfram. Hmm, never thought about that. Let me find out if Wolfram could do that. Hmm. Tem- temperature in Grand Rapids, Minnesota, on what day? October fifth, two thousand eleven. If Wolfram can do this, I'm going to be very impressed. You know what Wolfram just told me? No. That if I drink six beers, I have to wait an hour and thirty minutes before I'm under the legal driving limit. Good thing you didn't drive here. Good thing that the, somebody used Wolfram for that purpose on my iPad. Oh, dear. Do you know how many times I've walked to my iPad and just found random input left behind? Because well, it always keeps the stuff from the last I person. Know, I know you found uh, random apps installed. Yes, and uh, um, my perfectly functioning apps just got updated and everything else. Um, so um, I asked Wolfram this thing, and it hasn't responded yet. Oh. I'm going to refresh. This is too hard for it. Yeah. Oh, man. Um. Oh, oh, it got it. It got it. What was it? The, wait a second, this can't be right. 64. 64. October 5th, really? Yeah. I guess. Must be Sunday. Hmm. Ah, I'm impressed. So, 64. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Uh, we're going to go with that. I don't know if that's true, but how would you even know? You could just pick something that sounds right and, you know, yeah, like, you know, like, based on the geographic location, like, oh, it's cold in October in the Norman, Nor- Northern Hemisphere, so we'll go with 64. Uh, yeah, but I, I I do like the photo journals. It looks really nice. It's in, and you can rearrange it. So after you have it in that journal format, what do you do with it? Can you do anything else with it? Can, um, can you like they export? added a bunch of versions of share? But can um, you like export it? What what does it share as? Uh, like a PDF or something? Or uh, just give me one moment to oh, add. You can publish them as web pages and put them onto iCloud. Yeah, I mean, I do know That's that in the new iPhotos thing, sharing is really easy. Mm-hmm. Um, like, they can tie it into uh, uh, Twitter, Flickr, Facebook. Um, Twitter, being... Flickr. Yeah. Sounds funny. Um, you can also, it natively supports printing. If you have a, uh, yeah. a printer that can do that, which is kind of rare. I hear. I hear HP printers have that air, uh, air print support. Yeah. And you can also hook sync it to your iTunes and your other things. Mm-hmm. So. Which is normal, but I don't think they encourage you to plug your iPad in anymore. Yeah. So do you know iCloud? I do know iCloud. Well, I was I had an, I set it up one day, and then I just forgot about it because it wasn't that exciting. Cause yeah, I, I didn't have any other devices, and it was kind of pointless. Mm-hmm. Um, but I had a bunch of pictures in my um, photo stream or camera roll or whatever they called it. Yeah. Um, and I deleted all of them. But somehow, when I opened up iPhoto, all of them magically sunk in. So I had 300 pictures okay. of uh, I was trying Apple to TV think box. of how to correct you because it, it sounded wrong. Like, I thought, sunk? Okay, maybe that makes sense. But then it's like, sank? No, that can't be right. There's no... there's it, Like, they all synced. That's the only thing you can say. Yeah. It sounds wrong, but it must be. 
So all the pictures you had previously deleted from the device came back. Because almost all of them were just of a GFI and an Apple TV box. Um, yes. That does happen sometimes. It does. So I'm looking here at um, some commentary that, you know, other bloggers on the internet had. Uh, didn't you just yell at me for that? We're uh, consulting other networks and bloggers and other things. I don't know. I, if I yelled at you, I didn't remember. Nope. Anyway, um, so one of the bloggers on the internet said that you can, you almost can see that there's some fraying around the edges in this keynote. And so this person p- pointed out the bad pun of Resolutionary, the silly logo at the end of the keynote with the colored the colored mm-hmm. apple, mm-hmm. the weird product name having no number and no no like description, like I, the new iPad. I don't um, know if that's bad. And like they pointed out that Tim Cook looked kind of ragged. He kind of stuttered sometimes, and he didn't always have good flows and you know silly stuff. And then so this other guy like went off on this post and took. Slide, you know, pictures of the slides that Stu Jobs did, and the new iMac. That sounds exactly like the new iPad. You know, so that's yeah. the same. Thinovation sounds like <laughs> Resolutionary, right? So that was that was Steve's deal. So not a big deal there. And that Thinovation was describing the original MacBook Air from what 2009 ish, I think. Um, Has it been that long already? The original MacBook Air, yeah. It, oh. There was a two year delay. So in 2009 it came out, and then in 2000. Late 2010, the new one came out, but it was really only until 11 that it really mattered. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then of course, even as Steve Jobs had gone through, um, they have had tons of different logo colorings, and I thought it was weird that uh, the original blogger pointed it out because at the beginning of the keynote, when people were getting seated mm-hmm. on the on the projector, they had a apple, or yeah, they had the apple with a, a bunch of colors splashed around, mm-hmm. and then at the end of the keynote. They only had the Apple cut out with the color splashed. So, like, at the beginning of the keynote, the paint's all out, and at the end, the paint was just in the Apple. So I, yeah. I thought that made perfect sense. I didn't think it was strange at all. I thought it was fitting. Mm-hmm. So I don't, I don't know what they're talking about. I don't think Apple is fraying at all. Do you think so? Do you think there's any uh, weird stuff going on there? I, I didn't like the way they videotaped the whole thing. That could be just a problem but, with the, the people they hired. I, I yeah. Know. One thing I would like to comment on, though, that um, when they did the pan out of the whole um, auditorium, yeah. like everybody, like oh, this is the post PC world. None of you need laptops, and everybody had the laptops, and then everybody also had their phone in their left hand because they were taking pictures. Mm. And you know, it, it, you, you realize why, of course, because they were all live blogging this. Yeah, and it's really hard to live blog on a, on a tablet. You know, the post PC thing isn't for us; it's for people who don't know what they're talking about. If you stop and think about what most users do, it, it's perfect for they them. They send an email, they use Facebook, and then take a couple pictures and then edit it a little bit and then post it to Facebook. Yeah. You know, it's very um, simple stuff. We we type a lot. We're we're programmers, we're bloggers, we're um we do news stuff. Yeah, I, I mean, you know me, I can't stand anything that tries to do stuff for me like a my graphical interface. Right, absolutely. Like, I think that's why I can't stand Ubuntu. Uh, I'm just really endorsing Debian right now. You can get us stuff doing that. that. Uh, so, apparently, new iPads have already started ship- the shipping process. So, people yeah. pre-ordered, and they're already shipping from Chengdu, China. Want to go intercept one? You know, it's hard to drive a truck in the ocean to a tanker. We'll wait for it. We're going to get to the harbor. Um, hey, I can play the Harbor Master game on the new iPad 3 with Retina display. Okay. <laughs> um, oh no, I, I forgot I don't have any of my games anymore because somebody caused you, a somebody, failure. Somebody ordered their new, I, new iPad with engraving. Would you ever engrave an iPad? Would you ever engrave anything, like, on purpose? You know, if it said something really offensive or funny, <laughs> yes. I would just love to say... Actually, I'm, I'm going to not say that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but just to see if they would... Uh, um, do it? Engrave it. Yeah. You know, um, I wonder uh, if they would reject it. I think they would. I know. But one of my um, mom, or one of my mom's friends posted an image that she ordered a cake, and um, it says um, "Happy birthday, somebody," and then it says underneath that uh, "Best wishes." Like, like it, they wrote underneath that, like in frosting. Yeah, yeah. I thought that was really funny. Clever. So uh, when when the when the product was shipped, when the iPad was shipped, it said personalized iPad with 16 gigabyte Wi-Fi black third generation it didn't say just new ipad 
So yeah, that makes sense. Internally, I, Apple, I guess, is saying that this is legitimately the third generation. And that's what we're going to call it. It is. Yeah. So I guess they're going to go with that iPod scheme of naming. You know, like yeah. iPod third generation, iPod fifth generation, blah blah blah. I like that. Hey, uh, um, yeah. Can you think of any reason why they would ever like? I, I want voice dicta- t- voice dictation on um, my iPad too. You think they'll ever do that? No. Hmm. I think I think that's a big enough draw for people to uh, get it. I think the Retina display is a big enough draw. Yeah, but you know, so people can talk about Siri because you can understand the concept of talking to your phone and then having something happen. But it's a lot harder for people to conceptualize what a Retina display means if they've never seen an iPhone or uh, an iPad with high resolution. Because people see monitors all the time, right? We have like 12 monitors in this room alone, minus like eight. Um, And... The three monitors that I have here are all standard 172 resolution monitors. This one's 150, those are 160, and they don't look spectacular. They're just regular, ordinary monitors. They look, they look fine. They look fine, because if you view them at a far enough distance, they end up being at a display quality anyway. But the thing is, it's a lot harder to talk about something that you need to see than it is for something that you can just imagine. Like, you can't imagine what a render display looks like compared to something you've seen before, because you just don't know what the difference is. Mm-hmm. Until you touch that. When I first touched the iPhone 4, when it came out two Junes ago or whenever that was, you know, it was like taking a piece of paper under a glass screen and moving it around with your finger, because it was that high quality. Mm-hmm. I don't know what the new iPad is going to be like. Presumably the same, but I don't know. We're going to find out. I've only touched the iPad 4, or, uh, the iPhone 4 once, and that was at Best Buy. And immediately, <laughs> me, after me picking it up, it just started buzzing at me. That's that's great. Yeah, the, the security, security device. Yes, he was there right away. What did he do? Like, oh, that, don't worry about that. That thing's real sensitive. But I just scurried off. Okay, that's a good choice, though. Yeah. I, I, I would love an iPhone, but I'm going to wait now. What are you going to wait for? iPhone, uh, Android. iPhone, Android. Uh, no, see, after doing all this new stuff for the podcast and mm-hmm. getting into the podcasting stuff, I really like how my setup is here. Oh, look, one missed call. And, uh, I, I almost feel like I'm really enticed to stay with Android if the quality of the OS can improve. I hate the hardware. I like the OS, but they need to improve in conjunction with each other. I love the hardware on the iPhone, regardless of what it is. I don't care if they change it or if they leave it the same, mm-hmm. but I don't know. I, I almost want to keep my Google lifestyle because, you know, I have a lot of email accounts and they're all, you know, separate. And on Android, you can register a bunch of accounts into one device, and they all can send out from the same email address, mm. transparent, transparently. But on the iPhone, they have mail, and that's your only client, really, for the most part. Yeah. Um, so, I know you had two mail clients for a while. Yes, and thanks to you for that. But, <laughs> so what if you had your Android phone, and then you got like the next generation um, iPod? Like, Do you think you could just use an iPod and so, a phone? So you know, it's funny that you mentioned that, because I had a phone before this. It was a rumor touch you know, it was just a, it was a feature phone. You know, it wasn't like Android. It wasn't a real operating system. Yeah, it's kind of like your flip phone, but with a touch screen. Right? Yeah, I, I'm really happy with my. So phone. you know, it was like your phone with a touch screen, and you know, you have the flip phone, right? Yeah, spider. Yeah, so my phone was previous to this one was just a, you know fl- kind of you know flat phone with a slide out keyboard and stuff, mm-hmm. but it didn't have a real OS. And so I got the iPod Touch, and what I hated was carrying two devices in my pocket. Ah. And so on one I do email and on the other one I would do texting and I would do email a lot more but then you know at the end of work I would have to text to get it right back home and you know it seems kind of ridiculous that you need to do all this stuff when you could just have one device. Yeah. But is the unification of your texting and your email really worth any dollars per month? I don't think so. That's why you get the iPod. Like so, with Messenger, if you're on Wi-Fi you can send Yeah, right. Yeah, I really like that feature cuz you know I don't text at right. all. So you can send a text with Messenger? Um, give me one second, and I'll make your phone buzz. Cool. And um, So how does that work? Wouldn't it just send as an email? Uh, no. Huh. Um, composing new to... Let's hope you're in my contacts. Don't know. You know where you are. Well, I just flagged me. I typed in Ryan. It shows you your mobile, and then it just decides it doesn't like that. Interesting. But if I can review past history, I, I um, chatted with one of my classmates at school. Like mm-hmm. he'd always text me, like, "Hey, what lab is due today?" And then we'd be like, uh, "This lab." And then um, we'd he'd just quick do the lab. And Apparently, it was seventy degrees on October fifth in St. Paul. Huh? that's pretty warm. Mm-hmm. So, but, I mean, I would almost I so I loved my um, 
iPod Touch, but I needed the money to get an iPad 2, and I probably didn't buy it because it wasn't exciting enough, and then I bought a MacBook Air instead. Yeah. Um, oh, uh, one thing I want to talk about. Yeah. Um, they're keeping the iPad 2 in the lineup. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Um, not very happy with that. Because? Because, well, I realized the iPad 2 is for a different person. Um, and so this resale value is now... Um, Gone. Yeah. You know, um... So I, I gotta go find somebody who doesn't read the news. <laughs> you know, it's pretty tough to do that these days, so I, I suggest you hurry. Um, no, no, don't worry. I'll I'll find somebody. Yeah. Hey, where's Mike? <laughs> you know, he would probably take that. So you can, let me think here. You can get 185 for it right now. I can get No, you. no, no I, I'm not doing that. Too low? Yeah. Too, okay. I would have bought it three months ago. What? iPad. What about it? When did I buy it? Do you remember? I don't remember. You were there. I wasn't there. I, I don't remember what month it was, but it was before that 4S, so September-ish. Yeah. Late September. I remember you were really looking at the Apple TV. Oh, speaking of Apple TV, we kind of skipped over that. Oh, yeah. So they made a new Apple TV. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I think that's all that needs to be said. Okay, no. So <laughs> No, so Apple introduced a 1080p uh standard Apple TV. So the the new TV, it has an A5 chip in it now. So now it's, you know, using the chips that the 4S and um the iPad. the iPad 2 are using, which they have obviously a ton of because, you know, they already have those in production. Mm-hmm. So what I'm hoping is uh, which brings us into the next and final thing we're going to talk about today. And that would be what the future of the devices are. And specifically what the future of the iPod Touch is. Because what my thought would be now is it's still using that old A4. And if they want it to keep up, they're going to have to do something to it. Presumably bring out a good camera for it. And then put an A5 in it. Because I've got a ton of them. It doesn't need quad-core graphics. So it can have an A5. What do you think? Um, You know... Not quite sure. Um, I mean, what do you think the future of all the devices in are in general? I know what the future of the iPad is. What? What is it? iTable. <laughs> Revolutionary. So, so resolutionary too. Oh, resolutionary! Retina I, I, display table. It would be amazing. Can you imagine a retina display table? Well, I wonder. I would never drink on it. Drink on it? Well, you see, I have a tendency to knock over anything I'm drinking. So if I'm drinking something, it always somehow ends up on the table. And um, I don't know if retina is like water. You know, you know. Actually, I wash my iPod Touch all the time, and it was fine. <laughs> what? <laughs> I mean, I wash the screen with a wet rag. Um. <laughs> okay. You know, I would. I don't know if I'd ever set a pop can or an iron s- steak, which is something we just keep on the table. You don't know. No, ah, you can open my notifications from the Smithsonian. Really? What? Really? This can open notifications. Yeah. T- double tap. Huh? Open some. I did not do that. You bloody did. <laughs> now he's scoring his iPad. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you think the new background I got for my iPad? Macaroni? <laughs> yes, my macaroni. But uh, my background, I so got it from you, the you, No Mart page. I, uh, I like Gnome so much. So when, when, you, when I saw that, I thought it was Windows XP for a second. That's yeah, um, totally better looking. So I think the future of the iPod Touch All is... Future. I mean, I think they need to keep it there because people still need a low price alternative to an iPad or an iPhone. Kids can't afford five ninety nine, but they can afford two hundred, right? Yeah, or they can get an Xbox, or they could get an Xbox. But you know, the people with feature phones they want to, you know, something that's cool, so they're going to get an iPod Touch that they can carry with them as opposed to an Xbox. But an Xbox does stuff. I'm saying. An iPod Touch can do email, and it can play games, and it can do more than a feature phone. You think it can play games? Kids like cheap games. I mean, I don't know what you're thinking of. Okay. Um, let's see. I know... Let's see. I'm, I, I'm, I was going to say, you know, at lunch, I always remember that at, during high school, but I kind of didn't go to lunch the last two years. But yeah, no, no. Back when I used to go to lunch, everybody in the cafeteria would always be talking about games. You know, like on the bus, I see a lot of people... With their iPhones and, you know, their Android phones playing games, you know, waiting to get off the bus. Oh, what was I doing? Oh, I was trying making my Kindle explode every day. That's not hard. <laughs> yeah. Sleeved outside. Yeah, was, and, uh, maybe that's I'm more kind of abusive on my technology. So what do you think the future of the MacBooks and the MacBook Pros and the... What do you think, what um, do you think of those? So do you think they're going to be coming out with um, any new uh, laptop products soon? Yeah, I think that's the next step. I so, also think they're going to throw an iMac in with it. You think they're going to do a new styled iMac? Yeah. Okay, so what do you think that's going to be? 
I really think that it's going to just be resolutionary. So do you really think they're going to do some kind of high resolution? I mean, they keep on doing it for their mobile stuff. Why not their desktops? Do I mean, you think, I, I love the new iMac displays. Do you, think that, do you think they have the ability to make a 21-inch panel with that high of a density? It, have you seen how thick the iMacs are? Nobody's going to notice if it's a little thicker. No, 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 no. no I mean, if, if they wanted to get to 200 pixels per inch, do you think they could manufacture that in a reasonable amount that, right now? This is the future. I'm saying, like, in the next four, few months. I don't think they'll be able to do it for a laptop quite yet, but... Uh. I mean, I don't, I don't think they're going to be able to do it anywhere quite yet. Um, this is a 13-inch screen. Compared to the 9-inch screen, it's a lot bigger. Mm. Uh, I don't think they can make it... You know what they're going to have to do, then? What? You know what they're going to have to do? What? You're going to have to get some ATI and Ifinity cards and just put four iPads together. Yeah. Because you know how beautiful their uh, new ATI's uh, multi-monitoring thing yes, is. Yes, yes, I do. So I don't, I don't know. I think, I think they really would love to go um, random display on, you know, these monitors on, you know, their notebooks and their, uh, yeah. te- you know, desktops. But I don't think they're ready for it yet. But Lion did, in, or Lion seven point or you know, ten dot three or ten dot seven dot three. That's what I mean. It did introduce uh, double sized icons for some things. So ooh, yeah. it's spooky. They never actually talked about Lion. That surprised me. It was mostly about the iPad, and what did, what what do they have to say about Lion? Because Mountain Lion is coming out in five four months. It eats penguins. <laughs> we'll talk about that some other day. Yeah, yeah. What were you what? gonna say? No idea. Oh, must have closed with my iPad. Mm. Sliding to open, but uh, didn't resume. So I guess I have nothing to say. Okay. Well, I guess it's time to sign off. Yeah, I think so. So uh, where can we find you on the internet? Well, you can find me at um, MatthewPutchell.com, where you'll be prompted with my WordPress page, where it will be exploding. And Yes, yeah. of course. And, of course, you can find me, Ryan Rampersad, all over the place, on Twitter, on my blog, of course, Ryan.Rampersad. Dot com, except that it's not at all. Yeah, <laughs> I, I really need to buy that domain name because I always tell people that and it's wrong. I'm sure they're looking for but me there. Who actually? If you tell somebody something, they just forget. Yeah, it. they don't. They don't read it. Yeah, that's why I have business cards. Yeah, so. absolutely. I always give people that anyway. Uh, and of course, you know, this is a Nexus special. We do this occasionally whenever there's something important to talk about, such as an iPad or keynote or keynote or maybe something revolutionary or resolutionary. Exactly. And so, it's been a good show. This is Matthew Butchell signing off. This is Ryan Rapperset again. Have a good one.